A classroom controversy is erupting in Florida over how students will learn about black history. The State Board of Education has just approved standards for public schools. One rule that teachers must now follow requires middle school students to learn, quote, how slaves develop skills, which in some instances could be applied for their personal benefit. And at the high school level, if students learn about race massacres like the 1920 rampage in Ocoee, Florida, teachers must include, quote, acts of violence perpetrated against and by African Americans. Joining me to discuss is Andrew Spar, president of the Florida Education Association. Andrew, to be clear, when it comes to that massacre, that was against African Americans trying to prevent them from voting, just to be clear with folks who may not be familiar with that history. What is your reaction to these standards? We're very concerned about the standards here in Florida. You know, what teachers want to do is they want to teach kids an accurate, complete, and honest history, both the good and the bad. And what we see happening here right now in Florida is the governor is putting his political agenda ahead of the education of our children, and he's picking and choosing what he believes should be part of the history that is taught in our schools. I mean, you mentioned two examples from middle and high school, but even in elementary school, where we typically talk to kids about explaining and describing and defining, they're being told just to recognize and identify uh, key figures in African-American history, not talk about their contributions and how those contributions may have affected their lives and the lives of their families. What other standards? Uh, are there other ones besides the ones you mentioned, besides the ones that I outlined there in the introduction to you that are concerning? Yeah, absolutely. Again, we're talking about what's missing from these standards. Uh, Florida's Articles of Succession, when, when there was the Civil War, aren't even included in uh, these standards and talking about the impact that that has on uh, our students uh, or, or on, that had on black people and particularly slaves. Uh, we also see when we talk about uh, the Supreme Court ruling of Brown versus the Board of Education. Again, another key element is missing, which is when the Florida legislature voted to say that the Supreme Court ruling was null and void in the state of Florida. Those are key elements that we need to know because we learn from our history. And when you leave that out of the teaching to our students, uh, it's problematic. And keep in mind, teachers in Florida are operating under a law passed last year, which was the Stop Woke Act, where they are threatened with their jobs and their teaching certificate if they teach something that the governor decides is part of woke in America or woke in Florida or part of uh, stuff he does not want taught in our schools. And so because of that, teachers are very hesitant as to how they navigate uh, standards when things are key issues are missing. So, Andrew, your organization represents 150,000 teachers and, and also other education professionals. What are you hearing from them now with these standards passed? Well, we've been hearing for a while from them because last year, again, Florida changed, uh, passed the Stop Woke Act. They also had a civics training that they did for teachers. And we were hearing from them about how it seemed like they were trying to rewrite the history, leave things out, talking about how the founding fathers in our country uh, fought against slavery, but not talking about how they own slaves. So uh, teachers are very concerned with what's happening and how we're narrowing the curriculum. And they're also very concerned that many of our students are no longer seeing themselves in their learning. And that is really, really important for kids to learn. It's one of those foundational skills that, that one of those foundational needs that kids have, which is to see themselves in their learning and how their learning connects to them. So when you say don't teach current events, uh, when you say uh, limit what kids can see and learn, uh, that's a real problem for educators. Can you talk a little bit more about that? What are the long-term effects that you are concerned about with children learning history the way it is outlined in these standards? Again, you know, there's that old adage, if we don't learn from history, we're destined to repeat it. So if you are selecting what you can and can't learn in our schools, as the governor is doing right now for his own political ambitions, uh, then kids are missing out on that education they deserve and need. If they don't learn about how slavery really came about in this country and how uh, there were attempts to continue slavery even after the Emancipation Proclamation. If they don't learn about how there was separate and unequal in our schools, uh, which, the, which Brown versus the Board of Education reversed and changed, uh, and how states like Florida and other states fought against 
desegregation, uh, then we're destined to repeat that. And what's concerning is we're seeming like we're going back to 1950 rather than going ahead to 2050 and the great prosperity ahead of us. Andrew Spar with the Florida Education Association. Thank you for being on the show today. We appreciate it.